Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Well, you know, all these weeks we've been praying and praying for rain. I hope we didn't pray too hard. Uh, it's coming down. It's going to come down uh, much of this week, it looks like, and that's fantastic. And so we thank God for the rain and the showers, and even though it makes things a little wet and soggy and kind of damp and, and, and dreary in a sense, but it's also, of course, a cause for rejoicing. It's also a great reminder. It's a great reminder of God's promises. He promises to shower down his blessings upon us. When you, when you walk through a shower, even with an umbrella, you can't help but get gets a little bit wet, right? And God's blessings uh, have that effect on us too. But his blessings are not just meant for us only, just like the rain is not meant for just us only, but also to be benefit of uh, everyone around us. And so we are blessed by God to be a blessing. And that's been his intention ever since uh, he first created people and, and gave promises to his nation of Israel and, and to us of the New Testament times as well. And so to be a blessing, that's what our mission is. Let's go ahead and speak our mission statement with each other. Grace exists to strengthen people in their relationship with Jesus Christ and to empower them to share Jesus with others. Let's sing our first hymn.
Now, as you're able to, I invite you to stand for the words of invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord for the peace that comes from above. Let us our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, you have called us to enter your kingdom through the narrow door. Guide us by your word and spirit that we may receive your discipline with humble gratitude, trusting always in your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. I'm going to invite uh, our newly joining members, the Men's and Myers and Grinelli's. Are the Grinelli's right there? Come on up, guys. Troy, Troy Tucker as well. Uh, as they're coming forward, I invite you to take a look at the information that was in the little insert in the bulletin. Uh, due to circum various circumstances, we weren't able to get Troy's information in there, and uh, he won't be able to stay either for the, for the re little reception afterwards. But Troy joins us through adult confirmation, coming from a Baptist church background. Yeah, just f shape yourselves however you can face me. And uh, yeah. <laughs> no pressure, nobody's looking. Everybody <laughs> Uh, Minz and Myers of Samantha through adult confirmation, also from a, a Baptist church background. Grinelli's, a lot of you remember the Grinelli's from days of yore, that, that kind of thing. So back into the fold. And uh, way back, way over from West Texas then, Joshua. Uh, coming from Winters, Texas, is that where you were at? Now over there in White Wright. Does somebody know where White Wright is? Okay, just making sure. So if you guys want to face me at first. Dear friends in Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, said to his apostles, whoever confesses me before men, I will confess before my Father who is in heaven. And so at this time, I invite you to lift your hearts to the God of all grace and joyfully give your answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day, in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge the gifts God gave you in your baptism? Then answer, I do. Do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? Then answer, yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, and in the Holy Spirit? Then answer, yes, I do believe. Yes, I do. do you uphold, or do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? And the doctrine of the evangelical Lutheran church drawn from the word of God to be faithful and true? Then answer, I do. Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Then answer, I do, by the grace of God. I do, by the grace of God. Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and actions to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? Then answer, I will, by the grace of God. I will, by the grace of God. And now... Do you desire to become members of this congregation, Grace Lutheran Church in Denison, Texas? Then answer, I do. I do. Will you support the work that our gracious Lord has given to this congregation with your prayers and the gifts God has given you? Then answer, I will with the help of God. I will with the help of God. Upon this, your confession of faith, I as the pastor here and on behalf of the entire congregation, welcome you as members of Grace Lutheran Church, joined by the Holy Spirit, into one body in Christ, to receive with us all the blessing that our Lord has given his church. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for the great goodness in bringing these, your sons and daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that by the work of your Holy Spirit, they will continue steadfast in the one true faith as together we await the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Welcome to Grace. Go ahead and welcome them. We'll have a... <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, you return to your seats. We'll have a uh, little extra special reception after the worship. Uh, because we go from worship and then fellowship time into Sunday school, uh, can't do a, a luncheon per se, but we'll be inviting them and also the members that had joined back uh, late July as part of that uh, to be our guests of honor. So please plan to, to stick around a little bit and introduce yourselves if you haven't done so yet. And now we turn to the Word of God. A reading today from the Old Testament book of Isaiah chapter 66. And I, because of what they have planned and done, am about to come and gather the people of all nations and languages, and they will come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them, and I will send some of those who survive to the nations, to Tarshish, to the Libyans and Lydians, famous as archers, to Tubal and great Greece, and to the distant islands that have not heard of my fame or seen my glory. They will proclaim my glory among the nations, and they will bring all your people from all the nations to my holy mountain in Jerusalem as an offering to the Lord on horses and chariots and wagons and on mules and camels, says the Lord. They will bring them as the Israelites bring their grain offerings to the temple of the Lord in ceremonially clean vessels. And I will select some of them also to be priests and Levites, says the Lord, as the new heavens and the new earth that I make will endure before me, declares the Lord. So will your name and descendants endure. From one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, all mankind will come and bow down before me, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Can if you would come up and share a song with us. <coughs> there we go. Good morning. This is a little song I wrote about uh, asking for some help. something we all can use once in a while. Help me, Father. I'm really feeling lost Like a boat adrift on stormy seas Feeling turned and tossed I always start with good intentions but the distractions get too loud I try to focus on you But get pulled into the crowd Help me, Jesus Hold me close to you Let your presence show me Teach me what to do How to keep my ears open To hear you when you call And know my You'll hear my cry and catch me when I fall. Help me turn from the things that are leading me astray. Search my heart, remove those things that are getting in the way. I want to be as faithful to you as you are to me. I want to be the child you want me to be. Help me. Help me, Spirit. Feel the warmth of your light. Stoke the embers of my heart and make the fire burn bright. Really trying to stay strong and free from doubt. Show me how to never let that fire burn out. Help me turn from the things that are leading me astray. Search my heart, remove those things that are getting in the way. I want to be as faithful to you as you are to me. I want to be the child you want me to be. Help me, 
to remember that you're always by my side and I'll be safe as long as I let you be my guide help me turn from the things that are leading me astray search my heart remove those things that are getting in the way I want to be as faithful to you as you are to me I want to be the child you want me to be help me turn from those things that are leading me astray search my heart remove those things that are getting in the way I want to be as faithful to you as you are to me I want to be the child you want me to be help me Scan, that's beautiful. A reading from the New Testament letter to the Hebrews in the 12th chapter. In your struggle against sin, you have not resisted to the point yet of shedding your blood, and, you ha and have you completely forgotten this word of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his son? It says, My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline, and do not lose heart when he rebukes you. Because the Lord disciplines the one he loves, and he chastens everyone he accepts as his son. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? If you are not disciplined, and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate, not true sons and daughters at all. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the Father of spirits and live? They disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. Make level paths for your feet, so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. See that no one is sexually immoral, or is godless like Esau, who for a single meal sold his inheritance rights as the oldest son. Afterward, as you know, when he wanted to inherit this blessing, he was rejected. Even though he sought the blessing with tears, he could not change what he had done. You have not come to a mountain that can be touched and that is burning with fire, to darkness, gloom, and storm, to a trumpet blast, or to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it begged that no further word be spoken to them because they could not bear what was commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be, it must be stoned to death. The sight was so terrifying that Moses said, I'm trembling with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand to honor God's holy gospel.
the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus went through the towns and the villages, teaching as he made his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? He said to them, Make every effort to enter through the narrow door, because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading, Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know you or where you come from. Then you will say, We ate and drank with you, and you taught in our streets. But he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Away from me, all you evildoers. There will be weeping there and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves thrown out. People will come from east and west and north and south and will take their places at the feast in the kingdom of God. Indeed, there are those who are last who will be first and first who will be last. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. I invite the children to come on up and meet Miss April right here. Good morning. You're the first one here. They're coming. Who's coming? Yeah, they're coming. Yeah. I know. And his shoes light up. That is awesome. I have a question. Have any of you ever had a bad day? Yeah. Multiple, me too. And I know some of you may, de may even be having a bad day today. I mean, that happens sometimes when it rains. Sometimes we get a little sleepy and we don't want to get up. So we get a little cranky, a little whiny sometimes. But I have something today that's going to help you kind of handle or go through those bad days. Okay, I call them the three L's, okay? You think you can remember three words? Yep, it's called the three L's. So the first one, well, we're not talking about that. So the first L is learn. So when you're having a bad day, there's something you need to learn about that. So sometimes, what are some of the feelings that we have when we're having a bad day? Like, how do you feel when it's a bad day? Cranky. Cranky. <laughs> Sometimes we get interrupted, huh? What else? How else do we feel? Maybe we're sad when we have a bad day. Maybe we got in trouble at home. How many of you have ever gotten in trouble at home? Like, almost like a zillion times. Almost like a zillion times? Uh-oh, you do lots of crazy stuff. So then you'll be able to learn a lot then. You do. So the first one is learn. So the first one is I want you to learn that, you know what, Jesus understands bad days. You know, he had some really bad days too. So he understands what that feels like when we're mad, we're embarrassed, we're sad. Maybe we're upset or cranky because somebody didn't let us sleep in. He understands all of that. 
You remember when he kept asking the disciples to stay awake and they kept falling asleep? I can imagine that might have made him a little cranky, you think? That might be a little bit of a bad day. You know, you ask somebody to do something and they don't do it. They just kept falling asleep. Falling asleep, they were tired. He wanted them to be awake so that they could watch. Like this? Like that? <laughs> yeah. So, but the most important part is that you learn that he understands exactly what you're going through. He knows how you feel because remember, he came here as a man, as a person, just like all of us. So the second L, like you said just a second ago, is lesson. Because there's always a lesson, right? So think about when you got in trouble at home, when you did something bad, you got in trouble, right? Okay, so what was the lesson when you got in trouble? Maybe to not do it again, whatever that was that caused you to get in trouble. Maybe you didn't clean your room when your mama asked you to. Yeah, and they got upset. So that means next time you learn to do it the first time they ask you. So you don't have to get in trouble, right? We learn from those things. We learn lessons. But maybe if you're upset or cranky because someone didn't sleep you, let you sleep in, maybe the lesson is to learn patience. Maybe that's what it is. Or maybe your sibling is taking too long and hogging the shower in the bathroom. Yeah. Maybe you can't get in there and you really need to get in there. Yeah. Maybe it's teaching you kindness. Okay. So there's always a lesson. Yeah. Yeah, too. I like it. Yes. And so the last L is love. Why do you think that? I know there are. There's two of a lot of things. Yeah. And so why do you think that love is the last L? It is, but most of all, because you know what? We go through all these things, and we learn lessons so that we can also learn how to love. Because you know what? God wants us to be good people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know, right there. I know. So you know all those people out there, do you know that they had to learn a lot of the same lessons that you did? when they were your age, and even as adults, we learn them too. But they learn that Jesus understands what they're going through, and they had lots of life lessons too where they had to learn how to make different choices and have different characteristics about things. And then, guess what? God helped them to love, to be good friends, to be kind to other people, to be sweet, do thoughtful things all of that because I know because God did that for us when he sent his son Jesus for us so next time it is so next time you're having a bad day I want you to go through all those L's do you think you can do it so what was the first one learn what was the second one Uh uh-huh lesson and what was the last one love was the last one you say love? love? Love. Good job. So next time you have a bad day, I want you to go through those three things, and it'll help you. And then that way, those bad days don't seem so bad anymore. Because you know what? God's always there, and he's going to help us get through all of those bad days. So can you fold your hands with me and pray, and then you can go back to your seat. Are you ready? All right, here we go. Dear God, thank you for helping us. To know that you know how we feel and that you help us to be better and help us to love like you. In your name we pray. Amen. Good job.
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord our God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I'm sure you know that there is a whole category of jokes out there that all begin with the same line, that all begin, you know you're getting old when, I'm sure you've heard several of them, and maybe some of them are pretty good. Oh, uh, for example, you know you're getting old when your back goes out more than you do. Or, you know you're getting old when pulling an all-nighter means not having to get up even once to go to the bathroom. <laughs> or, you know you're getting old when you have too much room in your house and not enough room in your medicine cabinet. Like I said, some of them are kind of funny. Some of them, they just hit a little bit too close to home for me, though, to make them seem maybe as funny as I might have at some points in life. So I turned 59 this year, just this summer, turned 59. Is 59 old? I mean, it's older than some of you, right? I'm hearing some notes. Thank you for that. <laughs> it's older than some of you, younger than others of you. <clears throat> but once you've reached 59, and certainly, probably also to just even 40 or 45. By that point in life, statistically, you are closer to the end of life than you are to the beginning of life, right? And so at that point, that technically makes you over the hill. But there's an old saying, you're only as old as you feel. That age is just a number, right? That your age does not have to define who you are. In fact, regardless of how old you are or how young you are, today you have God's assurance, his certain promise that you are certainly, most definitely, over the hill. In God's eyes, every Christian is over the hill, over the hill of Mount Sinai, standing on top of the hill of Mount Zion. See, in the letter to the Hebrews that we heard earlier, Maybe you remember, if you want to use your pew Bibles and look it up in Hebrews chapter 12, the inspired writer is making a contrast between two very important mountains in the books of the Bible, Mount Sinai and Mount Zion. And he begins by describing what is obviously Mount Sinai, even though he doesn't use that name right away, the mountain in which God gave Moses the Ten Commandments carved into stone. Remember, it talks about a physical mountain, a place in which there was fire and storm and, and darkness. It's a mountain where you, you did not get near to it. You did not dare to touch it under penalty of death. Which is exactly how Mount Sinai described in Exodus 19. Exodus 19 says, Put limits for the people around Mount Sinai. Tell them, be careful, you do not go up the mountain or touch the foot of it. Whoever touches the mountain shall surely be put to death. See, Mount Sinai was not to be touched or, or, or even approached without authorization. People were warned away by the darkness and by the storm and by the, and by the fire because God had said that he himself was going to be present on that mountain. He would come down from his holy presence in the glories of heaven and there he'd be stationed on the mountain because he wanted to be. He wanted to be near his people. And yet the problem remained that no one can stand in the presence of God and expect to live, at least not if you're a sinner. No one who sins even a little bit can survive being around this completely sinless God. For those of you who are science fiction fans, I mean, sometimes in Star Trek or things, they talk about matter and antimatter. The, dare, the two dare not come into contact or it's the end of everything, Right? And it's sort of like that with our sin and God's holiness. It can't, they can't coexist. And so this first hill that's described in the book of Hebrews, Mount Sinai, where God comes to his people and, and gives his law, that, that may as well be Mount Everest to, to most of us as far as you and I are concerned because, well, because none of us has even the slightest chance of going a single day without sin, much less our entire lifetimes. And yet, without pleasing God, with every single 
action with every single word we speak, with every single thought that we think. In other words, unless we're perfect, we have nothing to look forward to. Nothing in our future except an eternity in hell, forever apart from God. That's the agreement. That's the covenant that God made with us on Mount Sinai. That was the word used in the reading. Maybe it's toward the very tail end of that, you might remember, that covenant thing. You know? that, that, that word covenant is not used just a whole lot by us, but, but, but we use other words that are basically identical. Contract, for example, is a pretty good substitute there. We all know what a contract is. We've all been asked to sign on the dotted line for different kinds of agreements and documents. So maybe the bank, maybe you make a covenant, maybe you make a contract with the bank. The bank promises to loan you some money so you can buy a car. And in turn, you promise to pay them back a certain amount every month at a certain interest rate. And as long as you keep your end of the bargain, as long as you make those payments, the bank lets you keep the car. It's a two-sided thing, right? Each side promises something and get something in return. Well, in some ways, not every way, but in some ways, this was the covenant, the contract that got signed at Mount Sinai. We wanted God's blessings. And that worked out pretty good because God wanted to give us his blessings so that we could be a blessing to the world. And so first, using Moses as his messenger, God spoke his law, the Ten Commandments, and then it says this, we didn't read it today, but it says this in Exodus, the people responded with one voice, everything the Lord has said, we will do. They made an agreement. They had a covenant. Now the key thing is, just like the agreement you make with the bank for a car loan is a two-sided agreement, so also the agreement on Mount Sinai is two-sided, God promises to do his part by bestowing blessings on his people as long as the people did their part to follow his commandments and to be a nation of priests for all the rest of the world so that blessings would also be multiplied. Now with the bank, with the bank, if you don't keep your end of the bargain, if you don't make your payments, they have the right to penalize you or even to take the car away from you. What does God do? What does God do if with this agreement, with this covenant, we don't keep our end of the bargain? Well, what does the contract say? What's the Bible say? The Bible says this. It says, cursed. Cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. See, it's no problem for God to keep his end of the bargain, to bestow blessings, just like it's no problem for the bank to loan you a few thousand dollars. They've got it. The problem for us is that there isn't a single individual on earth who has kept his or her part of the contract. The Bible says that. There is no one, no one righteous, not even one. That's in Romans 3. That's why God, in his wisdom, established a new covenant. And perhaps the most important feature of this new covenant is that he is the one who promises to fulfill both sides of it. He signs for both parties, for himself and for us. God is the only one whose signature is on this new contract, yet we receive all the benefits even though we took none of the risk. In fact, that's why very often, instead of using the word covenant, we might instead use the word testament to describe this, as in last will and testament. Jesus said that word too. We often translate it that way. At the Lord's Supper, Jesus says, take, drink, this cup is the new testament in my blood. See, as many of us know, after someone writes their last will and testament in order that their estate will be distributed according to their wishes, the only thing left to happen 
is that person's death. Their death is the triggering event. And if you are named by them in their last will and testament, if you are an heir, you receive the benefits of that person's estate without necessarily having ever taken any of the risk that they went through to accumulate that wealth, to gather that property. So what is the triggering event of this new covenant? It's Jesus' death. When Jesus was only 33 years old, he went over the hill for us. The hill of Mount Calvary. And by his perfect life, Jesus fulfilled the terms of the old covenant that had been required of us. And there on the cross, God's own son shed his blood in death triggering the benefits of the new covenant. So to bring all this full circle now, what it means, what it means is that you are over the hill. This two-sided covenant that was established on Mount Sinai was fulfilled and it was then replaced by the new covenant on Mount Calvary. The one that says, it is finished. God names you as his heir in your baptism. He affirms his promise to you every time you hear the gospel, whether you're in church or on your own, watching remotely. It happens every time you receive his body and blood in the sacrament. There's nothing that you do to earn those benefits. There's nothing you do to deserve that, 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 that great inheritance. God simply says, this is my promise. It's my promise. Just trust me, have faith. And get this, even the faith, even the faith that's required to receive those blessings is a gift of God. Our ability to have faith is imperfect without the work of the holy spirit without the work of the holy spirit to, to 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 use his word and his sacraments to create faith in us we wouldn't be willing to trust god for eternity much less trust our noses to him i i said that on purpose about trusting our noses to him there's a story that goes behind this i want the the, the story goes that one day there was a high school uh, physics teacher teaching the class about various laws of physics and on this particular day they were learning about the pendulum you don't know the pendulum right the thing that swings back and forth and there's a law of the pendulum the law of the pendulum simply says that a pendulum can never return to a point any higher than from where it was released it can't go any higher it'll always be at that point or, or something lower based on you know grab uh, air resistance and things so the physics teacher was explaining this law of the pendulum to the high school class, was using mathematical formulas and diagrams and everything else like that. When he had finished, he asked the class, how many of them believed in the law of the pendulum? And, of course, they all raised their hand. I, okay. Well, by now, class was almost over. They figured probably the lesson was done. They'd even get out a couple minutes early. But the teacher asked for a volunteer. He picked a a young man, and asked him to come up there and stand at a spot he had marked on the floor right against the wall there. And, and several feet away from that, that spot on the floor, the teacher had rigged up very carefully, rigged up a, a, a strong rope that had a bowling ball at the end of it, reached not quite to the, to the floor. And the teacher brought up that bowling ball at the end of the rope, keeping it taut, about an inch away from the nose of this poor student. And the teacher said to him, now if the law of the pendulum is true, if all those formulas are right, and if, and if you trust me that I told you it correctly, it means that once I release this bowling ball, not push it, but just release it from right here in front of your nose, it's going to swing across the room and swing back, and it can't come any higher than where I'm releasing it from, and you'll be perfectly safe. On the other hand, <laughs> on the other hand, if the law of the pendulum is false, or if I told you wrong, well... Ooh, well, I'd rather not think about it. And then he looked that student straight in the eye. 
that bowling ball an inch away from his nose and said, what do you think? Do you believe in the law of the pendulum? By now he's looking a little bit pale, sweat is beating on the forehead. But he answered what he thought was supposed to be the right answer, a little weakly. He said, yes. No sooner had the word gotten out of his mouth than the teacher let go of the bowling ball and it began this beautiful long arc sailing across the room. It got back over to one side, came to a momentary halt, and then came sailing back. And it was still a few feet away from the student when he bailed out, jumped to the side. And the teacher was sort of amused by it. Of course, the class was too. And he asked, did, did he really believe? Did he really believe in the law of the pendulum? They said, no. And then, of course, the teacher stood there and demonstrated on himself. And, of course, he was perfectly safe. But I tell you that story because it's such a great analogy of why our faith in God is not perfect unless God himself is the giver of the faith. We may understand the principles behind God's word. We can understand the plan behind God's promises. We may readily agree that this should work. But are we willing to trust our noses to him? When life comes flying at us, faith comes from God, not from ourselves, so that no one can boast. Ephesians 2. We can no more decide to have a saving faith than a baby can decide to be born. You were born into the faith by the grace of God in his word, by the power of that name that's connected to the waters of baptism, sprinkled with the blood of the lamb. And what that means for you, my friends, is that you are over the hill. You are so easily over the hill. I don't care how old you are, how young you are. I can tell you for certain you are over the hill. You are over the hill of Mount Sinai where God brought his law that shows us our sins. And yet because of his perfect life and death on Mount Calvary, Jesus has brought you over the hill of sin and death and the devil. And that... More than anything else, that is what defines you. Your age, whatever that number is, your age does not define you. Being over the hill defines who you are. Look, I'm sure you have days, just like me, I'm sure you have days that just don't go the way you want them to. Days when things are not going well at school or at work or you... you, you you just feel kind of like a failure. But that is not what defines you. You're over the hill. You're a person who is first and foremost loved by God, redeemed by God. There are days where it can feel like you're just failing, failing at friendships, failing at, at, at family relationships, and, 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 and yet even those do not define you. You are not defined by who you are as a student or as an employee or as a parent or as a spouse. Instead, all of, thing, all of those things and you yourself get defined by God and his promise that you are over the hill. He has brought you to himself to live as his child. Whether at work or school or home, whether you're young or old or anything else. You know you're getting old when your knees buckle and your belt doesn't. You know you're getting old when there's more hair in your ears than there is on your head. But being over the hill it's not a matter of being old. It's a matter of God's promises because it is God's promises by his power and his will that he has given you the faith then to accept those promises that you are in already as good as standing 
on the heights of Mount Sinai in heaven itself because he promises it. It's who he makes you. On earth, on earth, once you're over the hill, your body, your mind, they start to decline, we usually say. Everything is downhill, but not in God's kingdom. Because in God's kingdom, well, guess what? Once you're over the hill, everything, everything is looking up. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to stand as we go to God once more to bring us over the hill of our sins and to, from Mount Sinai to Mount Calvary. The world promotes living solely for oneself and diminishes the value of reaching out to others. Even those of us who bear the name of Christ can become self-absorbed about things that have little to do with our neighbors, our communities, or our church. We have often been guilty of failing to be genuinely concerned about other people, about failing to be concerned for others, and upholding our health. Take a moment right now to reflect on your life and prepare to approach God with all respect and humility. Gracious Father in heaven, we stand before you today guilty of many things in our thoughts, in our words, and in our actions. Our selfishness weighs heavy on our hearts, for we have found ourselves conforming to the pattern of this world instead of your word, and have thought of ourselves more highly than we ought. Forgive our sins for the sake of Jesus, and transform us by the power of the Holy Spirit to put you first in all things and to think of the needs of others before our own. Do you know who Jesus is? He is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Yes, and because of his perfect life, sacrificial death, and glorious resurrection, we have forgiveness, life, and salvation. As a called and ordained servant of the word, it is my humble privilege to announce God's grace and, as it were, unlock heaven for you. Not through any power of my own, but in his stead and by his command, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. Please be seated now as we worship the Lord with our offerings. And uh, also, this is a great time to review our communion practice and policies at the back of the attendance cards in your pews.
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. For unless you give us a different perspective, the ways of your love are a mystery beyond our understanding. Yet gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. And to you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please be seated. We'll do the distribution according to our usual custom. You'll be ushered up by the center aisle, returning by uh, the side aisles. We also have alternative elements of low alcohol wine or gluten-free host for those who would require it. Just indicate it while you're kneeling. And if
We might be swapping out keyboard players in just a second. <laughs> this because Deborah has to get to another engagement, and so she'll be walking out on us. Nothing personal, uh, but she's very much in high demand. So we thank her for sharing her gifts with us this morning, too. And then uh, Jane will take over. In our prayers today, uh, quite a number of uh, special prayer requests. Go ahead and share these with you. Uh, for Aura Yoder having surgery on the 24th. For Pam Farrell, hip operation. Uh, Steve Tompkins, uh, liver issues. Um, for Richard, have to have a good EGD uh, Thursday. I think I'm reading that right. Uh, for Rain, thanks for Rain. Thank you for more Rain. <laughs> uh, for Sam, friend of the Jennings, uh, Sam lost his wife. And so for his comfort, uh, praise for Marsha having a successful surgery. Uh, thanks for Lauren's successful surgery. Uh, Gina's co-worker having a baby being born right now. You know this for a fact? That's pretty, okay. <laughs> so for the baby and the family. Uh, prayers for the family of Roy Hale, a uh, former member has passed away. And uh, students, teachers, and all those involved with school now that the school year has begun. Uh, prayer of thanksgiving for uh, Carlos recovering. I think I got them all. All right, let's stand to pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, you remind us today that that age in so many ways is just a number. And in fact, we are grateful to be over the hill. You have brought us over the hill on Mount Sinai, uh, saving us from our sins, having sending Jesus to fulfill all the law that you gave on Mount Sinai and throughout your word that, that we were unable to fulfill. And you bring us over the hill also of Mount Calvary, where Jesus defeated sin, death, and the devil. As we live our lives, may we do so with a youthful faith in which we're able to show it in everything we say and do and think. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the many who have special kinds of needs right now and in the coming days. For uh, Ora Yoder, and also uh, for Sam, lost his wife. Uh, for Pam Farrell, for Richard Laubin. Uh, Lord, we give you uh, thanks already, knowing that you hear our prayers being spoken on behalf of these and for others. You know exactly what their needs are, and you give them exactly what they need to, to uh, glorify you. Give them strength according to your will in both body and soul. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, many prayers of thanksgiving as well, certainly for the rain that we are receiving right now and our forecast through uh, much of this week, for, uh, uh, for Marcia's successful surgery, Lauren's successful surgery. Lord, we pray that uh, also with thanksgiving for Carlos, uh, for the new gift of life given to Jenna's co-worker uh, and their, their grandbaby. Lord, for these and so many things, we offer you our thanks and praise. And for those who have special milestones in life this week that they are observing, the baptismal birthdays of Ella Louise Haddock and Lainey Hunter, the birthdays of Sandy Franz and Emma Blood, the anniversaries of Chuck and Kelly Smythe, James and Tamara Patterson, for them and for all of us. May our hearts be tuned to praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for, your, for our country, for leaders uh, at the local and state and federal level. Give them wisdom and discernment at the, as they carry out their duties so that it would be for the good of all. Be with those who also serve us uh, in ways that can be dangerous or in which they're expected to make special sacrifices. Police force officers, firefighters, those in the armed forces of our nation. Grant them peace in what they do, bravery as they carry out their duties. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for ourselves, last of all, for your church here at Grace Lutheran, for churches everywhere that go through times of transition. We thank you for servants who can serve as your pastors, and yet we ask you to, to connect congregations and pastors in the ways that would serve you best. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus, who has taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated. When it said go, it meant go to the fellowship hall next, a special time of refreshments and welcome in honor of our newly joined members. If I could just help you identify them one more time, uh, the, I hope they're all still here. So Grinelli's right there. Just stand up so people can kind of, yeah, stare at you. No, men's and, <laughs> well, you can clap for all of them, that's okay, but there's a few here. Uh, Mins and Myers are right there. Troy, Troy, Troy's right here. He has to leave pretty soon. Stay standing. No, we're not done with you yet because they're going to include. We're also going to include the ones who uh, received a few weeks ago, but we didn't have anything. We couldn't, didn't have the way to work in a reception time for you. So Sandy, uh, ma'am, is right there, and also Pharaohs are right here. Uh, so stand up for a second, Pharaohs. Uh, 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 Dewalds, a few. I don't know some, something in the Dewald category <laughs> over there. And uh, am I forgetting? I'm probably forgetting somebody. In any case, so this... Lears aren't here. That's right. They're out of town. D don't cheer for them being out of town. <laughs> <laughs> We're, that's right. That's right. So uh, go ahead and sit down, guys. If you, uh, if you haven't had a chance to meet uh, some of the new folks, we have a special reception time. It won't be a full-blown kind of luncheon deal, which uh, during the rest of the year we normally could and would. But uh, we want to give at least this kind of reception to them uh, this morning, and then we can continue that as we have opportunity the days ahead. Okay, announcements, information, and who have we got here? Anybody, any, anybody named Gilbert going to say? 
Go ahead and use our red microphone real quick. Um, so today we have Youth Day from 2, 12 to 2, not 2 to 12, 12 to 2, and I will be feeding you lunch. We are actually prepping for our Youth Worship Sunday, so if you would like to be a part of that, or if you went to the gathering, please be sure to stay for that, because we are preparing. All right, good. Okay, other announcements? Elders? Oh, I see your hand back there. Whose hand is that? Oh, that's Sandy's. Okay. Good. And then you have one too, Carolyn? Oh, you should, okay. If the evening quilters could come up, up front, please, with Ben. Okay, so she's making me talk, which I'm totally unprepared for. <laughs> but um, Ben graduated this year, so Evening Quilters committed to doing quilts for all of our seniors as they graduate. So this one is actually for Ben. Those of you that have graduated, yours are coming, I promise. I haven't forgotten you. I see your face. Um, but this one we were able to get done before he leaves because this will be his last Sunday with us. So we are praying God's blessing and protection over him as he prepares to go into the service. And so this is for you. <laughs> before you, before you go away with uh, with Ben and the blanket, uh, just take a moment here. Want to pray with the blanket? So wherever you go, you know that our prayers are with you, even if you don't have the blanket with you. So hold on to it. <laughs> Hold on to it, and the rest of us, if you want to grab a hand or something like that, we'll do that too. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for, for Ben's presence with us today. We know that you're sending him off to places where uh, perhaps we don't uh, fully appreciate some of the things that will be happening and, and the, the, the responsibilities that you've given him and others who serve in the, the armed forces of our nation. Give him safety in what he does. Allow him to carry out his duties with integrity and, and honor. As we, uh, Lord, have our hands on this blanket, may also be reminded to him of, of uh, our hands with him wherever he goes and your hand of blessing as well to protect and, and uh, to keep him safe in all that he does. We ask that you do this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Ben? <laughs> yeah, they, they'll, they'll teach you folding and basic training. That'll... <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's fantastic. We're going to miss you seeing you, Ben. Uh, anything else at the moment to announce? All right, feel free to have some special refreshments in honor of our new members. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.